You ready for your walk? Yeah! <sighs> you know this is supposed to be your walk, right? Yeah, but waiting on your head's fun. Give me a couple minutes. Morning, tomato. <sighs> ready for your walk? Huh? Hey, where'd he go? Hmm, guess Abby took him out again. Eh, don't shock me. Must have gotten awfully close. I wonder if she's gonna be fine by herself. Ah, she's 12. She'll be fine. Go on, tomato. I got it. This is fun. Yeah, I may not be a dog, but I gotta admit, I got something good going on. You said it. Oh, man, I always wanted a pet. Well, not that I'm trying to call you a pet, tomato. It's just, you know, you kind of do a lot of the things pets would do and... Meh, I'm not offended. Doesn't matter which way it rolls for me. Good to know. <sighs> I'm happy we're becoming such good friends, Tomato. Yeah! <laughs> Go for it, Tomato! Tomato? Uh, Tomato? Uh-oh. See, I call this the hypnotic baton. Not only when you hit someone across the noggin with it does it hurt, but it also makes them really dizzy. Wow. So it's like a regular baton, except it's more. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, hey Travis, I can't borrow this, thanks! But hey, Abby, how was your walk with- Tomato. I wonder why that was so sudden. I don't know. I hope she brings that back, though. I worked hard on that. I'm sure she'll be fine. Now that you're not preoccupied with your nerd stuff, we should go read. Ooh, good idea. We still have to finish The Great Gatsby. Uh, last three chapters, I'm so excited. Everyone says it's a classic, and I'm pretty sure they're right. Oh, that's what you're asking about. Well, why you're in the basement of Potato Incorporated, of course. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, you're the weird robot chick. Yep, I'm evil Mr. Potato Man's secretary, Plexi. So if you don't mind me asking, why did you kidnap me? Well, you see, the boss has been doing some intergalactic research for his next project. He figured her, you know, genetic makeup was so different from everything else on this planet that he decided, you know, he wanted to investigate. So what, is this like a survey? Like, you're gonna interview me? Like, is this like a questionnaire? No, unfortunately not. He actually asked me to kidnap you and dissect you. Ah, okay, okay. Wait, what? Yeah, sorry, tomato. I gotta find the sleepy gas so I can put you asleep. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Listen, Plexi, like, you're really nice and all. We don't have to get too hasty. Ooh, you did that fight or flight thing again. Cool. Sorry, tomato. I don't want to do this, but, you know, gotta follow my master's orders. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Quit squirming! What the hell's all the racket down here? Ah! Hi, Tomato. Oh, wait, you're doing that thing the boss asked you to do, right? Yep, but the little dude's so scared. I figured he wouldn't be that scared. Plexi, just because he's not from this planet doesn't mean he's not alive. Dissecting him still isn't gonna feel good. <laughs> oh, it isn't? Hmm. Well, the code of robotics is I'm not supposed to hurt living beings, but I don't know if the boss programmed me with those. Listen, we do have to do what he has to say, so gonna have to just do it. Mm, yeah, I suppose you're right, Todd. Yeah, don't seriously tell me you're on the psycho side! Hey, I'm not a psycho. I'm just a robotic secretary following this programming that was built by a psycho. There's a difference. Sorry, Tomato, but orders are orders. <laughs> just don't make this harder than it has to be. Don't worry, you'll probably survive. Probably? Yeah, I mean, you have like a 36.75% chance of survival. So I guess it's not probably. But there's a chance. <laughs> Wait! Ugh, what now? Uh, how about I tell you guys my really cool, awesome backstory instead? And then maybe, I don't know if I can convince you that I'm really cool and that I'm worth not dissecting, then you guys don't have to, you can just let me go. Hmm. Hmm. I do like story time. <gasps> story time is my favorite type of time. Okay, Tomato, you've convinced me. Tell your little story. Oh, should we get snacks? 
Okay, Tomato, I'm curious too. And if we learn enough about you, then maybe we won't have to dissect you anyway. Yeah, see? This is a great alternative to not killing me. Mm, he makes a pretty compelling argument. Alright, lay it on us, little guy. I'm gonna do something a little more comfortable. Question. Why do you turn into a snail all the time? Huh? Oh, well, uh, due to how this world works, I guess it's just more natural for me to be something, you know, resembling something from here. As opposed to my, you know, biological demon form. Demon form, you say? So you're a demon? Mm, kinda. Alright, time to start with my life story. It was long, long time ago. In a far, long place called the Sixth Layer of Zalvazor. All things considered, Zalvazor was a pretty lonely place. There wasn't a whole lot to go on there. You know, I was basically a little germ guy. In fact, everyone down there was. We had little colonies and friends and social lives and buildings. Well, out of like molecular cells, it's kind of complicated. Wait, so you're just a parasite? Like, quite literally? Well, yeah. So was everyone in Zalvazor. But it was a quiet town. Especially being so far down on, you know, the circles and such. Admittedly, I didn't have a whole lot of friends. But I did have a life. I had my loving parents and a support system. I went to school and learned how to attack white blood cells. It was fun. White blood cells are monsters, by the way. They eat babies. Babies! Ooh, I'll uh, be sure to keep them off my social list. Oh gosh, eating babies is terrible. Guys are so small. So little protein. At least eat an adult. You're not even giving that baby a chance to be a full-grown adult, so you can just eat the adult. That's what I'm saying! Baby? Two grams of protein. Adult, 45 grams of protein. There's a difference. And if you really give that adult long life to live, then they'll be able to have more babies and you'll just have more things to eat. These guys sound like real idiots. See, you get me. See, we're already starting to get off on a better foot. Anyways, my parents sat down and had a conversation with me one day about where I was going to go going forward. Tomato, it's time to set a little bit of reality straight for you. It hurts us to do this, but there's only one way to tell you how life's going to go going forward. So around here, you can do one of three things in your life. One, you can either submit to the system and sort of, you know, die and stuff. Essentially just become living bacteria for the organism we all live inside. Wait, organism you live inside? I'll get back to that part. Let me finish the story! Or two, you can go off and fight the white blood cells. The white blood cells? Ugh, those guys are evil. They eat babies, you know. Ah, oh, the horror! They eat babies! Harold, we're not supposed to mention that to him. You know he has nightmares about the baby eating white blood cells? Reality hurts, damn it! Anyways, you can go join the militia and fight off the white blood cells. Or the third thing, you can become a breeder, like me and your mother did. I fought white blood cells back in my youth days, but then I decided to sit down and have more parasites like you. That future looked grim. I love my parents to death, but I knew I wanted to do something more for myself than, well, simply just be another cog in a machine. We were so smart for such little guys. So, I set it off to myself to do something better with my life. My parents weren't happy with my decision, but there was one that they accepted because I wanted to be happy. So I set off on my quest. It was long and arduous. I tried searching for something more, a greater purpose. And eventually, well, I kind of ran out of resources. I started fending for myself by killing white blood cells and eating them. They were right tasty. It wasn't against our culture or anything, but I was only so big. And eventually, you know, they'd kind of catch on that I was killing their men, and then they'd come after me, and I could only fight so many white blood cells. Those baby-eating bastards. Find on the little guys. <laughs> did it with tears. So then what did you do? Well, it wasn't until I bumped into a really weird guy. Guy much bigger than me. Fiend Squad attack! Shh! <laughs> uh, uh, help! Holy crap! Uh, Travis, no! Not so fast, you sexy frog! Uh, uh. <laughs> Please! <laughs> Travis, no! <laughs> oh shit! No, what the- oh, Where the hell am I? Oh my god, Scaly ate me! Oh no, shit! Froggy! Oh. Alright, just calm down. I'll find a way out of here. There's gotta be a way out of here, right? This place is crazy. I didn't think stomachs looked like this. Am I in a stomach? I kinda am, but everything seems so... domesticated. 
Like there's living things that are from here. Ugh. Like a freak of nature. I feel like I'm in hell. Oh god, Abby. Oh, I just got her back. I can't lose her again. Okay. Calm down, Travis. There's gotta be a way out of this. Wow, who's that guy? I don't think I've ever seen anyone looks like him before. Hmm. Maybe I'll like around and see what he's thinking. Mm. Ow! Oh, what the hell was that? Did I step on something? I don't know. Ugh. Hello! The f*** was that? I am the voice inside your brain! That's not terrifying. Oh god, is the lack of any flowing oxygen getting to me? Quick, voice in my head, how long do I have to live? Don't worry, as long as you're an organism, you should be fine. For a little bit. What do you mean, for a little bit? Well, it seems like you want to get out of here, don't you? Uh, yeah? What about it? What does it mean to you? Well, I also want to get out of here. Are you suggesting we work together? Yeah? Well, I don't see why not. It feels a little silly to deny a friend. I'm Travis. What's your name? Uh, my name is Zalzaraz. Well, nice to meet you, Zalzaraz. I probably won't forget this randomly. Alright, well, where do we start? Hmm, are we all in sixth layer? Perhaps there's a way that we can climb up and out of this place. Wait a second, we're in a stomach. Does that mean that... Ew. This thing has six compartments in its stomach? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, under the impression that you're something that might live in here. Or under the impression that you're some kind of voice in my head. Either one is weird, but even if that was the case. I guess you wouldn't know that you're inside a different creature. Wait, so you had no idea you were inside another creature? Yep, I guess we all just thought we were a part of some sort of strange meat world. That's so sad. Yeah, well, I guess you get used to it. Anyways, Travis was really nice. We ran on adventures, we ran hiking, we ran walking, and then we also had to figure out how to get out of there. Ugh, it's been so long since we've been down here. I'm starting to feel kind of weak. Well, yeah, that is probably because this thing is trying to digest you. Ah! We were having so much fun in your weird meat world that I almost forgot that I'm being digested! How the hell do I get out of here? Listen, there's one way! One way! And you're not gonna like it! What is it? There's kind of something I've been hiding from you. Huh? Like, is this something you said to him or is this something you're saying to us? Hey, something I'm saying to you guys. Well, what is it? All right, only one way in. Yeah! Ah! I made it! Huh? To you! Well, you see, I hated living in that dimension. I was ready to do almost anything to get out of there. I told Travis the plan, but it wasn't exactly the right plan. All right, you said run against this wall until what? Ah, well, you see, if you run to the wall enough, eventually you'll break through, and uh, you'll make it out. Huh. Well, I guess that makes sense. Alright, here we go. Oh, ow! Oh. oh, I think there's a lot more stomach acid on the wall because it really hurts my head. Ah, we're gonna try this. This is the only way we're gonna get out of here. Alright, alright, I trust you. When you said that, I really hurt. Why? Well, truth be told, I didn't know how to get out of there. I mean, I didn't even know there was a way out. I just assumed there might have been something bigger than the sixth layer, something bizarre than Zalzaror. <sighs> so my plan was for Travis to knock himself out, and then when he was unconscious, I could overtake his body. Essentially, I'd just eat away at all his cells and take over his brain. Since I'm kind of a part of it, I wouldn't be digested, and it wouldn't take me long to figure out how to get out there by myself. But, uh, something different happened. Zalzor, like, whatever, this is not going very well. I don't feel good. Just one more hit, and I think you'll do it. Ugh, okay. Wait, I think it's working. What the? Ew, you guys got puked up. That's gross. Yeah, it turns out we were in a creature called Scaly. It's kind of elaborate and I don't really understand it, but apparently Travis, before he got eaten by Scaly, was in a war with sharks and, and with, like this frog guy, and it was, it was really weird. Anyways, I didn't really understand a lot of it, but the point is, is that uh, that didn't really go exactly as I expected it to. So I kind of bid my time. 
eventually went back home with him, and I thought maybe there was still a chance I could possess his body, but I got attached. In what way? His family was so nice. Meeting Sam, meeting Abigail. Friends with the Twisty and Luna came along afterwards, too. I don't know. I couldn't even believe it grew past that. They were all so nice. And eventually I revealed myself to them and they took me right in. Like, I was a part of the family. Like, they didn't even really mind having me around. It made me feel so bad for what I did. I tried getting them killed. I almost did! Some friend I am. <sighs> well, I mean, you didn't, right? And that was a while ago. Why do you still feel bad about it? Uh, Plexi, living beings have this thing called remorse and empathy. Uh, you know, it kind of sticks around even after they made up for something guilty that they did. Oh, I didn't know they had a word for it. <sighs> I guess that's why, but then at the end of the day, I don't feel like I deserve to be around them. I offer myself up to them so much that I guess maybe I just don't care about myself. I always let them use me whenever I need them to, and, you know, I don't think they mean to hurt me. I guess maybe I just never said no because I never felt like I deserved to be there. Tomato? That's not like how it is. Right? <laughs> That's so sad! I said processors can't handle this! <laughs> You guys don't have to feel bad for me, it's just, I don't know. I guess I just wish I had the courage to say this to one of them, you know? Just get some kind of closure on the whole thing. Ow! <laughs> 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 Ow! The back of my head! <laughs> I feel really funny. <sighs> What, Abigail, what are you doing here? Ah, Abby! How'd you find me? Uh, well, I had a feeling this had something to do with evil Mr. Potato Man. It usually does. Not to mention, I also found a lot of green dust particles, and there's only a few people that I know that are green. I admit those when I get nervous. Uh, I thought he got that fixed months ago. Nope! So, were you spying on us? Uh, yeah, a little. How much did you hear? Most of it. Probably the parts I shouldn't have heard. Oh. Oh, God. <sighs> hey, Tomato, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, who am I kidding? I almost got your brother killed. I feel awful. Tomato, listen, that was so long ago. And I'm sure if he heard it from you, he wouldn't be that upset at you. But I used him, and the only reason we both made it out of there alive was because of a fluke. Aww. I'm just a stupid parasite. I was made to just kill and eat and be a part of a machine. Oh god, who knows what would have happened if I actually possessed him? If I actually made it out of there? Would my people have treated me like some kind of a god? Would we have had a war with the baby eating white blood cells? What if they won? What if they took out all my people? You're overthinking it. It's not like that anymore. That didn't even happen. That's on some like weird alternate timeline. What? How am I supposed to forgive myself? You guys are so nice to me. I don't deserve it. Oh, Tomato, of course you do. You're just saying that. I mean it. Tomato, if we didn't like having you around, we wouldn't. You're a great friend. And you're always right there when we need your help. Look, admittedly, we had never really established boundaries. We kind of don't really get the chance to do that when we're under pressure, but if you're ever too uncomfortable to help, then you just have to speak up and say something. We appreciate your help because you're, you know, useful and stuff, and we love you. If you think we're pushing you too hard, then just speak up. We're allowing you to take breaks sometimes. There's nothing wrong with needing help. Lord knows we need it from you. Heck, my brother has a whole cool alternate form that involves you. In all honesty, he's too nerdy for that, but, you know, he has it because of you. Look, I may not have said the nicest things earlier today. I know I called you a pet, and that's just because I was excited to have something that felt like a pet, but you're not a pet. You're our friend. And I know it didn't bother you, but maybe it should have. Because, well, this is a little bit disrespectful. <laughs> oh, 
god, Tamino, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. <laughs> I'm sorry. You don't have to be sorry, Tomato. It's okay. <laughs> You're safe with us now. We love you, dude. I love you guys, too. <laughs> uh, Plexi, they're having an emotional moment. This would be the time to strike if we had to. System rebooted. Ugh, owie, my head hurted. Oh. Aww, look at the tender moment they're having. <laughs> uh, well, should we get to dissecting or... Hmm, running through my analyzed data... Seems Tomato's actually pretty useless to us overall. He's not from another dimension, he's simply an evolved parasite, which is pretty cool, but it doesn't really tell us anything we didn't already know. I think I've developed that thing that humans call empathy! Alright, look at that. And my empathy says that this is no longer a necessary mission. Also, I couldn't cut into that little snail guy, he's too cute! Todd, am I too attached? Maybe a little. <sighs> well, as long as you gather the data you needed, I guess we don't have to dissect you. This will just be our little secret. Thanks, guys. I really didn't want to have to hit you over the head with this thing. What does even do? It doesn't feel good. Point taken. I think we're gonna go home now. Thanks, guys, for all your help. What help? But we kidnapped you. Yeah, but you gave him an opportunity to get that all off his chest. And, uh, I indirectly heard it, so... No hard feelings. Ah, oh, the innocence of youth. It's too sweet. Alright, get out of here now before uh, the boss gets pissed at us. Okay, see you guys. Bye! <sighs> Wanna go play Scrabble? Oh, yeah! This is my favorite part. Ah! <laughs> that guy got hit on the head with a coconut! Hi, guys! Oh, hey, there you two are. It's like 4 p.m. You guys are out awfully late on your morning walk. Uh, yeah, we got kind of wrapped up in a couple things. Well, good that you're home safe and sound. We were just watching Bozo dubbed over. It's the funniest thing ever. Oh, uh, sounds fun. Oh, uh, hey, Travis. Hmm? What's up, Abby? Thanks for letting me borrow this. <laughs> Holy shit, are you okay? Ibuprofen. No. Okay, I'll be back, guys. <laughs>